nice. First thing I'm going to be doing is I'll just make a git directory. So test.git. Okay. And I'm going to change, because I used sudo, I'm going to have to then change the permissions to be the git user. So for this, I'm going to sudo churn git git to change both the user and the group of test. Now let's go into it. From here, I'm going to initialize the bare repo. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue the git update server info command. So the git server is being completely refreshed. Another thing to note, for GitLab to have access to this repo, I'm hosting it on a simple Apache web server, as you can see here. If I refresh this now, you'll see test.git. So this is just at my IP address slash git slash test. Um, we won't go into how to do this. So there we have it. I've created the test repo in my git environment. It's hosted on the, on the internal web, um, which is on the same network as my GitLab instance. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to the create a project, which is, you can find it in here, create new project import project repo by URL. So in here, because my web, because my repo is hosted on HTTP in my local network, all I'm going to do is HTTP colon dash dash user at IP address and then slash git slash test slash test dot git because you can see it's in git test test dot git. So this is what I'll be using because this is what GitLab will be able to see. Point to note, which is quite important, you should always use the IP address rather than a DNS name because I found many, many issues when trying to do this. GitLab just doesn't work very well with DNS names, so just, just stick to IP addresses where you can. Um, Git, uh, sorry, username and password is optional, but I'll put it in anyway. Description if you want, we won't bother doing that and make it internal, create project. Now this will now start to import from this location. It shouldn't take too long. And there you go. Obviously it's empty, we know this. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm quickly just gonna add a file. So we'll just add a readme just so we know there's something in there. Um, And then we'll just add that. Just so we got something to prove the process with afterwards. Cool. So the repo has a file in it and it's only a readme. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. The next thing we want to do is create the mirroring. So we go into settings and repository. In here you've got mirroring repositories. Now this bit again can be a bit fiddly. So now we're going the other way we're not we're not importing from here now what we're doing is we're actually going to go into here so we're going to mirror we're going to tell GitLab that everything that happens in this project it needs to get mirrored back to here so wh where do I want it to go well I want it to use SSH and I want it to go to git at IP address of the server where it belongs and then the full path of where the repo lives. Note that I've added the full path, not just the path that the web server sees. The web server is not seeing the full path. It's, giving, it's seeing the, whatever path I've given it. Uh, so this is gonna be the full path to where I want it to mirror to. We can only push, as you can see. I want to detect host keys, and I'm gonna use a public key. Oh, I'm not too fussed about these, especially for now. Cool. Now, the documentation isn't that great, and I have added issues in a pull request to the GitLab documentations, but, I mean, if you're not that switched on and not that knowledgeable, you'd think, okay, cool, that's it, done. But it's not. You need to take this key, 
and add it to the authorized key files on the Git server. Okay, that's very important. So next thing, if I update now and then refresh the page, you should see that the last attempt was just now and this last successful update was just now. So let's test that, shall we? Hey, so just wanted to let you know that we are actually finished. Um, you don't have to hang around anymore. All we do after this is test and prove the concept. But if you're leaving now, cool. Thanks for checking it out. Catch you next time. Okay, now if I head to my local machine and clone from the actual location of where we've mirrored to, you'll see that we do have a readme. Awesome. However, just to prove what I was saying earlier about the web interface, this will not be updated yet, okay? So if I remove that repo from my local machine and try and reclone it just from the web interface, you'll see that I've cloned an empty repo. See, nothing in there. Now, if I head back into there, and do the git update server info. And I head back over to here and pull. You'll see I have readme. I mean, that's not massively important because personally, all I do is I use this to sort of just host them to get them onto GitLab. I'll just be using that as sort of an intermediary to get them onto GitLab. But it, if people are trying to pull from here and they start panicking because what you've, what you've pushed to GitLab isn't in there anymore, then it's important to know that you, you will need to use the um, Git update server info from, from within the repo. It's important that you do that. But obviously actually in the repository. So that's that done. But now let's test the entire process, okay? So let's say that I'm a developer. <laughs> I want to take this repository and add some files to it and then push it up. So I'll clone this and then what will happen is I'll make my changes to it and then unbeknownst to me it should mirror back to the original location. Hello motherfucker. Let's clone. Let's go into it. Let's just create a little cool got that in there commit it and push it back up cool so as far as i'm concerned that's it done you see i i can refresh this I, i've created the the file and that's it that's all i care about and the important thing is has it gone back to the master location? If I remove it from here again, just get rid of my local machine. And if we go back to settings repository, mirror, there you go. Just now, just now. And to prove this again, what I'll do is I'll clone from the original location. And there is the test file that the developer created. So I hope this is handy for some of you. I know that the the help online isn't isn't that great sometimes. GitLab is fantastic and it's a great interface to have so your developers don't have to worry about too much what's going on in the background. But I found setting it up for the first time myself and making all the mirroring work, I ran into a few issues. So hopefully you know, hopefully you've took at least something away from this. Whether it's you weren't aware on how to actually get a local Git repo onto GitLab, whether it's you weren't 100% sure on how to do the mirroring, hopefully you learned something, right? So if you liked it or you got any issues with this, just please let me know uh, down in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing, then uh, it'd be pretty helpful if you subscribe to my channel. But I will see you next time, guys. Thank you.